It's been said that in emerging market countries where politics matter just as much as economics, and we've really seen that to be true with Russia, which just in a few months has gone from an emerging country to a global pariah, I guess Napoleon Bonaparte was right. Glory is fleeting, but obscurity is forever. Today's ETF battle is an audience-requested quadruple header between four emerging market ETFs from BlackRock, Schwab, Vanguard, and Wisdom Tree. Find out who wins the battle right after this. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. Glad to have you along for the ride. If you're here for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you've been enjoying our content, be sure to press the like button. If you have a certain ETF battle that you'd like to see, a certain matchup, be sure to hit the comment section below. Give us your ETF ticker symbols, and we'll take a look at it. You can also find us on Twitter, at ETF Guide. And again, be sure to give us your exact ticker symbols. If we choose your battle, you win your choice of an ETF Battles coffee mug or a t-shirt. Now, today's ETF battle was requested by viewers Henry Payne and Saeed. And we combined their request and we flipped it into a quadruple header. In other words, we're killing four birds with one stone. How about that for efficiency? Now, today's showdown is between emerging market ETFs from BlackRock, Schwab, Vanguard, and Wisdom Tree. And helping us to sort through these funds is John Davey with Astoria Portfolio Advisors and Mike Akins with ETF Action. Judges, welcome back. It's great to see you both. Thanks for having us. Uh, good to see you guys. Great to be here, Ron. Cost, exposure strategy, performance, and mystery are the four battle categories for today's matchup. We're going to see how each of these ETFs does versus the other. Uh, for the mystery category, that's where our judges get to pick that certain factor or maybe multiple factors that they feel are crucial to today's showdown. And who knows, that mystery category could end up deciding which of these ETFs wins the battle. Uh, our judges can also nominate wildcard choices if they like an ETF elsewhere. Now, I've got the scorekeeping chores, and we're going to go through each of these categories one at a time, giving our judges an opportunity to weigh in. Keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or any of our judges. So let's get started with the first category, which is cost. John, please kick things off. Sure. So, you know, amongst these four groups, we've got two that are cheap beta. So they're going to be much cheaper. Uh, and then two, which are kind of fundamental, you know, they're very specific kind of thematic. Um, so VWL wins. It's eight basis points. Uh, IMG is 11 basis points, FNDE is 39 basis points, and XSOE is uh, 32 basis points. I would say they deliver, you know, kind of four different verticals. So we just want to be mindful that we're not comparing apples with apples. Um, but VWO wins category. Thank you, John. That's a strong start. Mike, how do you see it? Do you agree with John's analysis? I do. I concur that VWO is the cheapest of the group. And I think when we talk through today's battle, I would just echo John's comment that you can really split this this battle into two categories. You got cheap beta, BWO and IEMG, and there are some differences there, which we'll talk about. And then you've got, um, you know, two kind of factor strategies, one that is a fundamentals based and the other, which is more of a special factor around um, state owned enterprises. But keep that in mind as we walk through everything. Excellent. That takes us next to exposure strategy. Mike, you're still up. Give us your analysis. All right, so this is where we get to have some fun. Um, starting with the cheap beta category, um, they are you know, designed to track the entire market, but when you get into emerging markets, you have to recognize that there's a lot of things that you have to understand with respect to how they define emerging markets. So with VWO and IEMG, the only thing you really need to understand is one considers South Korea to be emerging and the other doesn't. That's going to drive all the differences between those two portfolios. And it doesn't, it's not a neither here or there thing. You just need to understand that if you're using IEMG, which holds South Korea, keep that in mind when you're picking your developed XUS strategy so that you're not overweighting it and vice versa with BWO. The other two get kind of unique. So um, VN, FNDE is a multi-factor strategy. Um, and as a result, it's creating a value tilt in the portfolio currently, which gets you a very high exposure to financials and energy. 
um, something I actually like right now in this marketplace. And it's one of the reasons over the last um, six months, FND has been significantly outperforming. But it's also the reason that it significantly underperformed for the years prior to the last six months. XSOE is very unique. We call it factor special here at ETF Action. Special meaning that it's not a standard Bama French factor. It's a factor that's uh, more about the company ex itself. And I'll just give you some prime examples. So state-owned, SOE stands for state-owned enterprise. And a great example would be like China Construction Bank um, or China Ch Chemicals. Those are both um, state-owned enterprises by China. So therefore they won't be in XOS XSOE, they will be in the others. So lots to digest there. When you put it all together, I think that you're gonna see VWL, IEMG, and XS, XSOE act very familiar because they're designed to be broad beta trackers minus that SOE thing um, for XSOE. And then Schwab is going to have kind of a tilt through that multi-factor approach of value and factors um, with to value. And, and given the current environment, I like that. So I'm gonna give exposure to FNDE because the methodology is getting it into those sectors that I think have the tailwinds right now and probably can continue to outperform going forward. Thank you, Mike, for that analysis. John, you're up next. Give us your take. You know, Mike did such a good job. Uh, he covered all the bases there. So, I, you know, I don't have really have so much more to add. I mean, I'll give you my winners. Um, so I have multiple winners because I, I just think they're like many different beasts, right? So in the category of just the cheap beta, you know, I mean, I've used IMG, so I'm kind of partial to IMG just for how MSCI defines emerging markets. I think it's cheap enough. It's, you know, 11 basis points, so that's fine. You know, in the other category, it's really interesting because, you know, what Mike mentioned, um, I I think most people would not know what a state-owned enterprise is. And more importantly, you know, they really... I would argue it's going to be hard to know what to expect. So like we're going to talk about performance in a little bit, you know, but like year to date, excellent state enterprises, you know, have meaningfully underperformed all three other categories. Right. And it's like, you really have to like then look under the hood and try and figure out why that's the case. Uh, I just worry when you get into like a specialty thematic area, um, you know, part of the beauty of like fact investing is that there's, decades and decades and decades and decades of research and state-owned enterprises are a relatively new phenomenon. So and so the, my battle category winner in the showcase between XSOE and FNDE is FNDE because I think that's much more traditional. We can model it out. I know what to expect. You know, yes, value had a very difficult three to five years, 10 years. Now it's working and now FND is, you know, shining, right, in terms of like, you know, its performance. So I kind of would say if you're going to go with smart beta, I kind of would do FNDE. If you're going to go with cheap beta and not take any surprises, uh, you know, my preference is IMG. So two, two category winners uh, for that one category. All right. I got you down for a split decision between uh, those two ETFs, IEMG and FNDE. Thank you very much, John. That takes us next to performance. And you already kind of alluded to this, John, but give us uh, your – full analysis on performance uh, with these four ETFs. Which one of these really stands out at you? Well, you know, to, to be honest, like right now, the, the you know, at Astoria Advisors, you know, what we try and do is build portfolios, blend factors together, you know, use alternatives to kind of dampen the volatility. You know, we're more aligned with like an FNDE per se compared to like a lot of the other ones. Um, you know, right now value is all the rage. So, um, you know, look, uh, you know, we've got one, three, five year kind of to compare on a one year basis. FNDE is outperforming. Uh, it actually has positive returns, like 93 basis points. Um, VWO is down six. IMG is down nine and XSOE is down 17. Okay. So I just mentioned like, you know, know what to expect. Can you model that out? So I like the FND is doing what it should be doing when you've got you know, corporate profits that are accelerating. You've got, you know, rotation in the marketplace out of growth into value. Value does well when rates rise, when you get, you know, a, and a reacceleration of the economy after recession. Um, 
you know, I love Wisdom Tree. We have a lot of products there, but just kind of hard for me to model out what to expect from XSOE. With that said, Ron, on a three to five year basis, XSOE actually has outperformed. Um, you know, they, they've you know we've got like a hundred to a hundred and twenty, hundred fifty basis points of outperformance on a three and five year basis. With that said, Ron, you know, forward looking, right? Markets are forward looking. I do think there's a lot of legs in the value trade. So if my conviction is high, the value is going to do well going forward. I still would lean on FNDE, even though it may not have had good performance in the last three or five years. So my battle category winner, I know it looks murky, is FND because on a forward-looking basis, I, do, I think value is going to do well. Thank you, John, for that comprehensive look at performance. Mike, how do you see it? Yeah, so I think John did an excellent job kind of walking through the basics there on performance. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway for me is now you've got four broad-based emerging market strategies, and there's a 17% difference between the top performing and the bottom performing year to date. So it's just a great reminder of you know that there's a lot more to these strategies than what's in the name and just the broad-based exposure they're trying to give you to. Um, if I'm going to pick a winner, um, I'm going to do it based on a look-forward analysis as well, and I like FND the way it's set up currently. Um, but it's something to keep an eye on because you know at 30 almost 31% financials in FNDE currently, um, that can that could cause some pain if you, know, you start seeing some sort of credit shock in the marketplace, especially with emerging market um, banks um, that can roll downhill quickly. So there's a, an elevated um, risk associated with it. Currently, I'm okay with that from a risk reward perspective. If I was not okay with that, that strong overweight, um, then I would just stick with IEMG. And that's really just a, a preference. I like v, VWO and IEMG. It's a package deal. You need to know that if I'm going to use IEMG, then I need to stick to iShares or similar minded products when it comes to definition of developed versus emerging. If I'm going to use Vanguard, same concept. You got to stay in the same stream. Otherwise, you risk double counting or missing a, um, a market altogether like South Korea in the emerging market case. So FND is my winner um, for the performance category on a look forward basis. Thank you, Mike. Now we move to my favorite category, which is the mystery. This is where our judges get to pick that single factor or multiple factors that they feel are crucial to today's quadruple header. So, Mike, you're still up. What is your mystery battle category and who wins it? Uh, so my mystery category, category today is going to be just the big picture. And I think when you're when you're selecting strategies, you have to think about it in context of the overall portfolio. And that key concept here is understanding that Hey, if I'm using passive strategies, understand the methodology, understand countries that are included, not included, and make sure that you are using a suite of products that work well together. Um, and that's very important when constructing international asset allocations um, when it comes to not only country exposure, but um, sector and industry exposure as well. Um, and to that extent, you know, I would give I, there's no outright winner here. It's just that concept of knowing um, how these products work together um, because you can, you know, it, it, it travels through all the market segments, whether it's countries and regions, um, whether it's sectors and industries, whether it's um, factors um, and different types of strategies. When you're constructing a portfolio, you need to make be using like minded strategies. I like to call them suites, right? There's iShares has factor suites, State Street has factor suites. But if you use suites of products together, you're going to get a better diversified outcome. And I think this, this particular matchup lent itself well to um, bringing that up as my mystery category today. Big picture. So very good. You didn't have any particular ETF that stood out in this category for you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, got you down for a four-way split decision. John, you're up next in terms of mystery. What is your mystery category and who wins it? So I want to just uh, mention something that Mike just said. Um, you know, Mike's 100% correct. Like when, when we build portfolios at Astoria Advisors on behalf of other clients, other financial advisors, you know, there's sometimes such a sharp divergence in these returns as you see. You know, Mike mentioned the 17% spread between the top and the you know the, the top and the bottom performers. My historical experience working with financial advisors is that's something that's very uncomfortable for them. So there's a terminology like own growth rent value 
So we're going to speak bullishly about FND, but just you have to be mindful that value can go through long periods. Um, so I just want to mention that because I, I think I think that's important. Like we at Story Advisors actually use a very different ETF. We use like DGRE because DGRE, which is a wisdom tree product, it uses kind of quality growth. And I just think like steady Eddie wins the race. So DGRE, um, you know, is like the suite of the wisdom tree quality ETFs, which we at Story Advisors use. So we use their European quality growth ETF, the IHDG. We use the DGRW, the US uh, quality growth. Um, I think that's super important because, you know, we're talking about like which one do we like of the four, but in reality, like I own something very, very different. So is that your wild card choice then, DGRE? You know what? I'll duplicate the category. I have a different, you know, kind of category, but I'll just stay in the same picture for um, that Mike's bringing up, which is like the big picture. Um, okay. You know, which is that like you, you got to like make sure when you build a portfolio that not, you, you're not just chasing like a hot theme or something like, you know, you got to be able to wear the downside as well as you can bring the upside. Um, so I kind of think like, you know, in, in that instance, you know, there's actually I, I at Astoria Advisors, we're biased because we use DGRE. Okay, so now we give our judges their final opportunity to weigh in and give us their overall battle winner. They can also choose a wild card as a preferred choice, but it's completely up to them. So, John, give it to us. If you put a gun to my head and said, which of these four tickers we would use on a forward looking basis, you know, one in you know, the next couple of years, I would say FND because it's a value play. You know, the dividend yield, which is what was going to be my mystery category, which is like 4.6%. Um, I like how they're defining the, the underlying constituents. Um, we principally like to tilt away from market cap. Uh, and I just can't wrap my head around the excess OE. So we would use FNDE on a forward-looking basis. But think about Mike's big picture thought, you know, throughout the life cycle, investing for 5, 10, 20 years, you know, we are using DGRE because we think quality growth over the long run makes sense. The way investors, uh, the way readers and viewers should think about this is like you, you know, you own quality and growth for the long run and you rent value. And we're in definitely an acute period where value is looking well. Um, but, you know, over time, quality wins for sure. Um, so that's my kind of thought on like the overall category winner. Mike, your final chance to weigh in with your battle winner? I like the way FND is set up right now. Um, so that I, that's my battle winner. I would throw a big caveat on here with respect to emerging markets in general. Um, you know, if we, um, some of our indicators are, are questioning the, the short-term future here, um, you know, the higher risk, higher reward. Um, and this is definitely, the, the flip side of that is um, it's more pain when, when, things go, when things go south. And I think F and D fits our view of the market right now, um, but it's still all emerging markets. And if you start getting some credit concerns, et cetera, I would guess that F and D actually will go down faster as well. So if you like emerging markets, you want to be allocated there right now, F and D is my pick um, just with those big caveats on risk. Well, according to my battle scorecard, uh, F N D E is our battle winner. And uh, this particular ETF, uh, our judges liked its value tilt. And, of course, uh, some great points made uh, by both both of our judges. John mentioning that dividend yield over 4% for FNDE. Those of you looking to uh, add some dividends to the mix. And who knows, if equity returns are going to be lower in the future, then uh, dividends clearly will be a bigger component of the overall return. So just keep that in mind. Also, Mike mentioning the overweight to financials and energy. Those two sectors are, as of late, have been doing well. So that certainly, if that continues that trend, that certainly bodes well for FNDE. And uh, a great, great job overall, judges, with, with helping us sort through today's emerging market showdown. We couldn't have done it without you. Great job, John and Mike. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, guys. Enjoyed it. Which ETF battle would you like to see in our next episode? We'll post your ticker symbols in our YouTube comment section below or on our Twitter feed, at ETF Guide. If we choose your battle, you win your choice of an ETF shirt or a coffee mug. Thanks for watching. I'm Rhonda Leggy. And until next time, watch the battle before you invest. 
right here on ETF Guide TV.